Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join now at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Welcome. How do you practice speaking? How do you practice speaking English? I'm live on Facebook today. Decided to do the show on Facebook. Our question, how do you practice speaking English? My live show is getting a lot of questions about practicing English. AJ, how do I practice English? In my country, I have no one to talk to. I'm from, and they tell me their country. They say, how do I practice English? Hi, how do I practice English? And uh, a lot of people seem stressed about this. Right, like kind of upset about it even. Like they, I have nobody to practice English. Uh, that's why I can't speak well. And they, they have this very strong belief that they, they must have someone to talk to every day or often or their English will not improve, that they will never become fluent because they have no one to talk to. First, let me welcome everybody live on Facebook, so welcome everybody, and lots of people saying hello, and hello to you, lots of different countries as always. I will talk about our topic first, then I will come to some of your questions and comments. So, Facebook watchers, questions and comments, please be patient, I'll be back to you soon. So let's go back to this thought. The first thing is, I think too many people focus on this question of uh, talk to somebody, talk to somebody, talk to somebody. And that's not really what they need. What they mostly need is listening, 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 listening. It's the foundation. You probably need at least about six months of very intensive listening where you're focusing just on listening two or more hours per day every single day. Listening, 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 getting a huge amount of listening first. This is the foundation. And most people never get this in school. You don't get it in school. School is a lot of reading, typically. You may do some little exercises, you know, little activities in the class where you chat a little bit. But you, you usually get very little listening, surprisingly, in school classes and so the, that's the number one thing you're missing because your brain needs lots of that listening first before you really get comfortable with the language and that's why you really should focus on that first that's always going to be your foundation is lots and lots and lots of listening here's the good news you can listen from anywhere alone. You don't need an American to talk to. You don't need a British person to talk to. You don't need anyone to talk to. All you need is your little phone or MP3 player, iPod, whatever. Some headphones or not, some speakers, <laughs> your computer, whatever, and just play your audios every day. You can do that anywhere. You can do that while you're driving your car. You can do that while you're on a train or a bus. You can do that at home while you're cooking dinner. You can do that anywhere at any time in any country. That's great news. So that's the main thing to focus on. That will actually help your speaking a lot. A lot. You know, we have on my Twitter is a great example of this. We have Mehdi, for example, one of our superstar members. Now, he's in Iran. He doesn't have anybody to talk to. Yet, he has achieved a very high level of English. How did he do it? Mostly listening, 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 listening. That's the first 
big thing. He'll tell you lots of repetition. He tells everybody this because people ask him questions all the time on Twitter. And this is his advice all the time. It's the same as my advice. Lots and lots and lots and lots of listening every day and repeat the same audios many times. Deep learning, repetition. This is going to help your speaking so much. And of course, it helps your listening too. And again, the great thing about it, you can do it all alone anywhere in the world. No need to stress. Now let's say you do this. You do the six months. Ah, your listening improves a lot. Your speaking starts to improve even. But, but you're like, ah, I want to practice speaking more. I want to work on my pronunciation. I want to become more fluent. What can you do? You have no one to talk to. Okay? You can talk to yourself. You can talk to yourself. Maddie does this, I know, because I've seen him mention it on Twitter. And a lot of our superstar members who've been very, very successful do this also, where they just practice alone in a room. They'll just have, you know, imaginary conversations. They'll give uh, speeches just alone in a room. You know, you could talk to a mirror if you want to, like giving a speech. And that's just practicing talking. You can just talk and talk and talk and talk. Like I'm right now talking to the camera, right? Nobody's talking back to me. I'm just talking to the camera. This is, I'm getting a huge amount of practice, right? Of course, I'm a native speaker. I don't need to practice English, but this helps me a lot with practicing public speaking because I do this so much talking to a camera for my podcast or talking even just to a microphone for my audio podcast. Because I do that almost every day, public speaking is very easy for me now because I practice it constantly. Well, it's the same thing for you. You can do this at home. Again, you could record yourself with a camera or with a microphone, like on your computer or your phone. You could listen to it if you wanted to. So you could hear your own mistakes or hear your own pronunciation. Or you don't even have to record it. You can just talk. You can just walk around your room speaking English, talk about the weather, talk about how you're feeling, talk about what you did yesterday, talk about what you want to do tomorrow. Just talk and talk and talk and talk every day, just to yourself. This will give you a lot of practice again you can do it alone, anywhere, any country, anywhere, all by yourself. Another thing you can do, you can combine these two things, the listening and the speaking. You do this several ways. This is what my pronunciation course does. So in the pronunciation course, what you do is you listen to me. And then you imitate me. So you get some listening. You're hearing me speak. And then you're pausing. And then later, you're not even pausing. But in the beginning, you pause. And then you try to imitate me. So you try to speak exactly like me. And in this way, you'll be practicing your pronunciation. This also helps your fluency, though. It also helps your the, the easiness of speaking. So the words come out faster and more easily. You can do this with any audio. And then there's the shadowing technique I describe, or tracking as I call it, which is where you're listening and speaking, listening and speaking, listening and speaking with no pausing at all. You're doing it at the same time, which is a little difficult in the beginning, but eventually you can do it. And again, you can do this all alone, by yourself, anywhere, at any time. And many of our members in many different countries have only done these things and become fluent, excellent speakers all by themselves, all alone, without a friend who speaks English, without any conversation websites, without anything, only themselves. And then finally, they test themselves. Maybe they travel. Maybe they have a chat with somebody online and they do very well. So you can train and practice speaking all by yourself using all of these different methods, starting with intensive, repetitive listening. That's the foundation. Do that at least six months. You know, you, longer is great. You, you never really stop doing that, but you can focus on only doing that for about six months. And then after that, you're ready to speak. You can do all these other activities that I just suggested alone. And combining all these things together, you do all these things, you know, a couple hours a day, 
your speaking is going to improve a lot and you have no need to get stressed out about, I can't find someone to speak to. And, oh. Okay, there's, just relax, just relax. You're going to be fine. You'll be fine. You can do it yourself, wherever you are right now in the world. All right, my Twitter, by the way, is AJ Hogue. That's my name. Let's put that on the screen. If you're watching, you can see. If you're just listening, it's AJ, H-O-G-E. AJ Hogue is my Twitter. That's where you ask me questions. That's where you communicate with me directly. And Twitter's basically like a public text chat. <laughs> That's basically what it is. Pretty simple. AJ Hogue. All right, let's go to the comments and questions now. As I said, I'm live on Facebook. My Facebook is Effortless English. Effortless English on Facebook. So lots of people saying hello from lots of different countries. So hello and hola, which is hello in Spanish. And then we've got lots of people just suggesting all the different things you can listen to. You know, audiobooks, songs, movies, game shows, TV, podcasts, on and on and on. It's endless. There's so much now. You're so lucky because, number one, you have the Internet, okay? And number two, English has the most on the Internet. So for English, there's so much English listening. And if you want courses, you can get my courses, EffortlessEnglishClub.com, where you're really getting the specific training and then there's just tons of other stuff out there. So tons meaning a lot, a lot, a lot of other things out there. So there's plenty. I mean, this is a nice, this is a nice comment, and, and, it's, and it's correct. Dalal says, I lack the ability of speaking. I think it's a talent some of us are born to be fluent speakers. Or, you know, kind of eloquent is a word I'll explain in a minute. Even if we speak our own language. Some people have a special talent. I, I agree and disagree. I agree some people do have a talent. They seem to be naturals, right? Some people from a fairly young age, just, you know, they have that gift, you know, that ability to just talk, talk, talk. They're really good talkers in their own language, and then they can do it. Any other language they learn, they also can do it. And it's also true that some of us, some people, don't have that. And so naturally we're a little shy naturally a little difficult to talk and have conversations you know we're not this word elo it's, it's really not fluency it's kind of fluency but if it's your own language we might say eloquent it means it's the ability to communicate well through speaking however so i agree with that part you're right about that of course you're right we all can see this I disagree that it's a special talent only because you can develop it. It is a skill. It is a skill. And you can develop this skill with practice. I have. So I, I'm, I'm one of those people. Like when I, I've told this story many times. When I started doing public speaking, I was really, really, really shy and nervous. I was really bad at it. Very, very bad. It took me um, several years to get better and it took me many many years to get very good so even in our own languages this is true but with practice you will get better and as i said the best practice of all the thing that really improved my speaking ability in my own language public speaking was was doing exactly what i'm doing now which is you know practicing by talking to cameras and talking to microphones and then, of course, I did give speeches to groups, too. So you can, you can improve by practicing. All alone. You can, all alone you can do it. All right. Let's see. All right. So Yusuf has a common uh, problem question. And this problem also happens with your own language. I can, I can speak easily in my mind, and possibly even alone, but when it comes to speaking in front of other people, I can't remember some words and I forget what I will say. 
So it, what's your advice? Okay, so yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. This is a common problem for public speaking. And it can be a problem with uh, foreign language speaking also. I had this problem in Spanish, right? I could, by myself, I could actually talk to myself pretty well. I was doing the shadowing or tracking technique when I was traveling in Spain. But when I got in front of people, then this kind of emotion, like this nervousness would come up and my speaking would be much, much worse. And uh, it's also a common problem with public speaking. So in my own language, right, in the beginning for, for quite a long time, I would feel at home, I could practice and, you know, I could speak, of course, speak English perfectly fine. But if I was standing in front of a group of people, suddenly, oh, like my brain would turn off and I couldn't remember words, couldn't remember my topics, I <laughs> forget a lot of stuff. So it's, it's just an emotional issue, right? It's, it's caused by nervousness is what it's caused by. And so you have to train yourself to overcome the nervousness. It's not a language problem. It has, it has nothing to do with your language ability. It's all, uh, it's that nervousness, that emotional, you know, part to the, the fear, the adrenaline is what causes it. Adrenaline is the chemical your body releases when you're nervous or fearful or sometimes excited even. So you have to train yourself to function with the adrenaline. You have to get used to the situation. So you do it a lot. So then it becomes less fearful. So both of those things. Check my YouTube channel because I do have some videos about public speaking and they will also help you just with normal English speaking. A few things you do is you first you practice getting yourself very excited and you practice speaking while you're in that excited state, that ex feeling excited. This will actually help get you more used to speaking when your heart's pumping, when you're feeling some of those emotions. And you can do some other kinds of practices as well. Uh, and then the other thing is just practice, just doing it a lot because each time you do it, you get a little less nervous. So like for public speaking, your first speech will probably be the most, you will probably be the most nervous. It'll be, it will be the most uh, you know, fearful. <laughs> and then, you know, if you give a hundred speeches by number 100, you probably will feel much less nervous. So just, just the number of times will start to reduce the fear quite a lot. And anyone can do that. All right. All right, so Emmanuel, this is a good question. Um, good to see you again, by the way, also, yes. So basically, um, I finished all your lessons. Good for you, great. I know all the words on all the weanings, so that's great. But when it's time to speak, so similar question to the last one, when it's time to speak, I feel overwhelmed by fear, I get nervous, uh, I forget a lot of the new words suddenly. So again, it's an emotional issue, right? It's not, you, when you're calm and relaxed, you know everything. And then when it's time to speak in front of people or in a, in a real situation, suddenly you become nervous and then that stops, you know, your brain from working so well. So uh, again, I would recommend, uh, you know, I, like when the public speaking part, I'll, I'll mention things, they seems crazy, but you, where you jump around, you jump up and down a lot. You can use music to get yourself excited. So, so it's a positive feeling, but you also, you get yourself, so you kind of actually breathing a little bit heavy <sighs> and your heart's pumping, boom, 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 boom. Because this is physically, you know, in terms of your body, that's very similar to feeling nervous or afraid. Right? When you're nervous or afraid, your heart beats faster. Sometimes you can even breathe a little bit heavier, more heavily. So if you jump, you can kind of pretend or kind of create a similar feeling physically in your body by just you know jumping up and down a lot, get your heart going, and then get yourself breathing a little heavy, and then practice speaking English just alone, you know, like give us practice doing a speech or something like that. Uh, you could practice telling one of the mini stories, right? Retelling it yourself, anything really, but you do it while you're breathing a little heavy, while your heart's beating a little bit. So you get used to functioning. You get used to thinking in English 
while your body's having this reaction. You get used to speaking English while your body's having this reaction. This will start to train you to speak English and think in English when your heart rate is up, when your muscles are a little more tight, right? when you're breathing a little heavier, which are all the things, the same things that happen when you feel nervous. So it's a, it's a kind of a little physical trick you can use, and you can use this exact same trick for public speaking. I, and this is this was this was the trick I used. I still use it sometimes for a long time because before I would give a speech, same problem, right? My my muscles would get tight, especially my neck, throat. My heart would start beating faster, and I start breathing heavier. And, and then it was, this would cause my brain to start turning off, <laughs> right? So I started to create this. And then I would practice doing my speech. So I would jump around, I'd, breathing heavy, heart beating, and then I would practice my speech. And I would do this again and again and again, you know, like for a week or two weeks before my speech. So I got used to speaking well, even when my heart was beating fast, even when I was breathing heavy, even when I felt a little tired, right? When all these kind of physical things were happening, it helped so much. And then I start, so what I started learning how to do was change that fear, change that nervousness into more of a feeling of excitement and energy, into more of a positive feeling. So then it started to help my speaking. So you can do exactly that same thing. Good luck. Here's a question, a time question from Evo. Um, is it true that most of us need six years to become fluent after working hard each day? No, I don't think so. Um, I did a whole, I just recently did a show about this thing, this, this question of time. You know, so it, it's, it's fairly long because I talked about this in, in quite a lot of detail because we have a few problems when people ask questions like this. Number one, what is fluent or fluency? People have very different ideas about this word, right? Some people think it's you know almost perfect, like a native speaker, and then others will say fluent basically just means um, you know you can speak well about basic topics. I say it's you can speak well, communicate well, fairly easily about. Normal conversational topics, no, no special topics with special vocab, but sort of the normal everyday topics. And then the other question is time. When we say we, we often talk about years and months, but uh, really we should talk about hours because if you listen to English 10 hours per day, that's a big difference compared to another person who listens only one hour per day. Okay, so the first person will improve 10 times faster. So will they both be the same after one year? No, they'll be very, very, very different. So it's really number of hours that's important rather than number of months or years. So with all that in mind, you're saying working very hard each day. So working very hard each day, I would say is something, let's say very hard would be three to four hours a day of English, let's say. Three to four hours would be very hard. Hard, you know, good solid every day. What I recommend is two hours a day, at least. Let's say you're doing four hours a day of English. Will you need six years to become fluent? No, it should be much faster than that. Much faster than that. Four hours a day, I don't know. I mean, it depends on, Everyone's a little different, depends on what your first language is, how much English do you have already. But I would say, since you're listening to me now, you understand me now already. So you're already intermediate level, at least. I would say just a year, maybe a year. You should be fine, maybe two, one or two years, maybe less than that. You know, so I would say, yeah, don't, six, six years, no, I don't think so. Now, to become native speaker level, you know, like to speak almost exactly like an American or a British person, yeah, then maybe, maybe you're looking at, you know, six years or something like that. Or, but again, maybe less. It just depends on how much you're practicing every day. But I'd say my general answer would be much less than six years. This is one of the great things about independent learning 
because it's much faster than school. You know, people, we, we sort of get confused because in school, people will study English for 10 years and then they still can't communicate well. They can hardly speak at all after 10 years, which, and we think, well, this is crazy. Why? We think that's normal, but that's just because the school methods are so terrible, right? There's so much time wasted. Oh, and perfect. Ali has a question can, just connected to what I was just saying. Good morning. I have to wonder, I've been in an ESL class, that's in English as a Second Language, in college, and I'm never improving. I've been in class for one year, just losing time. Can you explain why the school versus online learning is different? Thank you. Yeah, there's many, there are many, 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 many differences. Uh, number one, in the school, you're, you're sitting there, you're passive. You're not the boss. With online learning, you're the boss. You choose. You choose what you listen to. If you like me, you listen to me. But if you don't like me, if you think I'm boring, that's okay. Go find someone else. Go find something else. I mean, that's the cool thing. So right away, you're in charge. You're the boss. You decide on what you listen to. So immediately, you're more interested. Just emotionally and mentally, you're more awake. You're focused more. It's already better just because of that. And that's a big, 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 big part of it. When you go to a class, you don't decide. The teacher decides everything. There's no choice, really. It's you go and you do what the class is doing that day, and that's all you do. So you know, the second thing, they use textbooks. They, you're typically focused on grammar, trying to memorize different grammar rules, you're typically trying to memorize vocabulary lists. None of these methods work very well. So you're just wasting huge amounts of time. With online learning, at least I can't say all online learning, but with uh, Effortless English for sure, you're doing huge amounts of listening. You're finally getting a lot of listening. Listening, listening, listening every day. You know, one hour, two hours, three hours or more of real English every single day. Man, you're gonna, you, you just, it's going to improve so your listening ability is going to improve a lot. If you start reading, reading books, especially audio books, you're going to grow your vocabulary very quickly. And again, it's all more interesting. It's all so much more interesting than a textbook or than some class activity. So, oh yeah, I recommend you try it. Try it for, I always just say, try it for six months. You don't have to believe me or anyone else, just do an experiment. You've tried ESL class for a year, clearly getting no results, nothing. So just compare, try this for six months. Try Effortless English for six months. Just six months, do it every day, two hours a day. And after six months, see the result. Do you improve? Did you do better than in the classroom? I think you will. Uh, here's a question. Is age important for learning languages? No, not really. No, there's, there's only one area there. There's only one area where it can be uh, make a difference, which is pronunciation for some reason. But um, other than that, it does not matter at all. You know, one of my favorite you know, super language learners is Steve Kaufman, who's now in his 70s, I believe, and speaks, I don't, I can't remember how many languages he speaks because he, he keeps learning them. So I'm losing my count. <laughs> I think the last time I heard, and this was a few, a couple years ago, he was up to 15 languages. Still learning new languages in his 70s. Learned several languages in his 60s, in his 50s. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Now, there is some research that shows that for, you know, kind of perfect, perfect native pronunciation, it does help to start when you're a child. That's the one advantage the kids really have. The big advantage they really have is that they very easily get that perfect pronunciation when they're very small. And when you're an adult, to get that same perfect pronunciation, you have to work quite hard 
compared to the children. But otherwise, you can learn at any age. We have effortless English members of all different ages, you know, from young to older. So it doesn't matter. Okay. Let's see. I love when you imitate Clint Eastwood. I wish I was good at it. I'm not good at it, though. I can't do a good... I need to practice doing Clint Eastwood because I like him. But I can't do a good... I'm not good at imitations of people. At least nobody you guys would know. All right. Okay, lots of people just saying thank you. So thank you back. Yes, indeed. All right, so here's a pronunciation question. Um, okay, fairly long one. I have this problem. I can respond to people quickly and confidently, but my pronunciation is so bad. And then when I focus on my pronunciation, I lose my fluency. Okay, I respond so slowly. Gotcha. Now, I don't want to speak. Just want to focus on my pronunciation but that's wrong too. Okay. So, you know, just, you got to relax. This is a normal thing. This is normal for any skill, by the way, any skill that I'll, I'll give you an example. It's not even language. It's just uh, jujitsu. Okay. So in jujitsu, there are lots of techniques for jujitsu. Jujitsu is kind of like uh, wrestling, Jap Japanese, Brazilian wrestling. And anyway, there are techniques and the techniques have several different parts okay so let's say there's one technique to escape someone's on top of you and you want to escape well you have to do something with your legs and you have to do something with your arms okay so both of your legs have a have a, a, a technique to do they must do something and both arms have to do something so it's very common for me and for all learners when you learn a new technique in jujitsu that if you focus on your legs, you forget your arms. So I'll start, I'll do the leg technique correctly, but then I forget the arm technique, and so it doesn't work. And I'm like, ah, I can't escape, why? And then the teacher will say, well, you didn't do your arms. So, oh yeah, right, okay. And so then go back and kind of fighting again somebody, right? And you know, it's fighting, it's happening very fast, just like a, in a conversation, right? Everything's happening fast. There's no time to carefully think about everything have to do it very, very quickly because the other guy is trying to win. So there's really no time to think carefully. So do it again. And this time I'll focus, you know, arms, 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 you know, grab his arms. Uh. So boom, the situation happens again and I'll do the arm technique correctly and uh, uh, it won't work again. And then I'll like, ah, why not? And then after I'll ask my instructor, oh, he said, oh, this time you forgot your legs, right? Ah, right. So... This is kind of normal when you're when there are maybe two or three different skills to perform at the same time. That it's normal for a while. This, it takes a while, and so in the beginning, for a while, sometimes for a long while, that when you focus on one, you forget the other part. So you get you start improving one area like pronunciation, and then you're you kind of forget your fluency. Your fluency gets worse suddenly, and then you ah, oh, so then you focus back on your fluency. And then your pronunciation drops. And you're like, ah! You feel like you're going crazy. So I understand. This, is, this happens to me in jiu-jitsu all the time. And I get really frustrated because I feel like, ah! I can never do them all! Okay? But eventually, what happens? Eventually. You, know, you focus on one, you get better. Then you switch to the other one. You, you improve that one. And, and then the first one goes down. Oh, then you go back to the first one. Right? And then eventually you start getting where your brain can think of both at the same time. And then finally, sometimes it happens suddenly, sometimes gradually, but you'll find that your brain will begin to do both at the same time. And you'll be able finally to do both, right? So like in the, like the first escape technique I learned in jujitsu, now finally it's natural. Really, I don't need to think at all to do it. The leg part and the arm part, they're both natural because I have done them Many, 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 many times, but it took a while, right? For a long time, I would forget one or forget the other. 
And so this is probably going to happen with you. So I know it's frustrating, but you just have to relax and just kind of laugh about it and accept it because it's just normal for it to happen. And you know, I, your name is Vietnamese, so you know, English pronunciation is challenging for most Vietnamese speakers. So you're just gonna have just try to be, you know, relaxed about it and just even just laugh about it. Okay. So sometimes focus on your pronunciation, and when you focus on pronunciation, don't get stressed about your fluency. Okay. And Sometimes when you focus on fluency, don't get too stressed about your pronunciation and just be patient and gradually you'll find that they'll both start coming together. You'll, you'll improve both separately first and then finally you'll be able to combine them together. So good luck to you. It, it'll, it will happen, I promise you. Okay, I'm going to go backwards here. So you mean <laughs> So you mean pronunciation can be acquired by wrestling? Ah, yeah, that's right. That's jujitsu English. <laughs> Very funny. Is your course good for people preparing for IELTS? Yes and no. It will help your speaking and your listening, which will help your IELTS, but it is not my courses are not specifically designed for any test. So if you're looking to improve your general overall speaking and listening ability, absolutely yes. And of course that will help for those sections of TOEFL or IELTS. But I do not specifically teach just for one test. Because I want, the real test is, is real, real world, real life. I want you to succeed in the real world. I've been following you since 2008, says Muhammad. Wow. That's a long time. That's almost to the beginning. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you. It says you're really doing a great job. I hope. Thank you, AJ. You are welcome. Are you American or English? This is our comedian with a serious question. I am American. Okay, let's, oh, this is an interesting question. Okay, so, hi from Sweden. I have a question. The question is, can I write when I listen to some movie? Uh, um, how, how, I can't speak with people. How can I uh, improve my speaking? Okay, so for movies, you know, I have a, another quite long video about a movie technique. The short answer is, with movies is you can um, you can watch them and you know play maybe five minutes and then rewind and then pause after each sentence you could use the subtitles if you want learn the new phrases learn the new words you could even go back again pause after each sentence and imitate imitate the actors imitate their speaking so there's a lot of ways you can use movies to to learn and to improve and to practice your speaking. And it's not a bad idea. Just choose actors that speak well. Mustafa says, hey Mustafa, I was speaking uh, without any confidence until I found AJ in which I have kept listening and listening on and on. I've even <laughs> slept during listening to some stories at times, but it was really worth it. Very true, the point you have to focus on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mustafa. So you try it while you're sleeping. I don't know. Some people think that works. I don't think so, but you can always try it. Okay, common question. This next one, very common, but I'll answer it again. What kind of books should we read or 
I'm sorry, what kind of book should we read to improve our English? Real books. What do I mean by what, what's a real book? Not textbooks. Not textbooks. A real book means a book written for written for native speakers or very similar to a book written for native speakers. For example, novels. Novels, novels. What's a novel? Novel's just a long story book, right? So let's say let's say you're a little bit advanced. You could read novels by Ernest Hemingway, for example. Famous American writer. You could read several books by Hemingway. That's a bit advanced, but you could do it if you were at that level. If you're not at that level, you could read more uh, novels for like young adults or even for children. Something like Willy Wonka, which is British, I believe, but still, you get the idea, right? Or Hardy Boys books, those are old books. There's a big series of them. I read them when I was a kid, and they're for American children. Uh, Goosebumps books, I've mentioned those before. Those are for kids. I can't, I'm not sure if those are American or British, but it doesn't matter. It's the same language, guys. Um, so... You could read the Goosebumps books also. They're for kids. They're kind of scary, but not too scary because they're for children. And uh, they're, it's a huge series. There are lots and lots and lots of those books. So anything like that, any kind of novels. And or you could also do nonfiction. Some people prefer nonfiction. Like I now, when I was younger, I read more fiction. Now I tend to read more nonfiction. So nonfiction, that's just, uh, you know, true information. If you're in if you're interested in astronomy, you could read, you know, Stephen Hawking books or any uh, popular astronomy books. Not scientific, just books, you know, for, for most people, for normal people, written by scientists. Or you could, uh, you know, read books about business. You could read biographies. Those are nonfiction. So you could read the, the life stories of famous people. You could read books about history. Anything like that. The key thing, so I know the next question, everyone always asks me, well, what should I, which one, which, which of those is the best? And the answer is none of those. There's not a best. The best is what you are interested in, right? What is interesting to you, because then you're interested, then you're excited, then it's something you want to learn and read, and therefore you will do it more. Therefore, you'll enjoy it more. Therefore, you, therefore, you'll learn better. So, if you hate romance books, don't read romance books, right? But if you like romance books, then go get some and read them. So that's why I can't tell you exactly. I can give you general ideas like this, but you know, each person has to decide because everybody has their own different interests, right? They're, what they like, what they don't like. And that's also true for movies and TV shows. People ask me, you know, what's the best movie? What are the best TV shows? Can you suggest some for learning English? Well, it's the same problem because I don't know what kind, you know, I know what I like. I like science fiction. I like, um, I don't know, some, some kind of interesting drama sometimes, things like that. But maybe you don't like that. Maybe you prefer something you know, again, like a romantic comedy, maybe some people like that better. So you have to really choose things that you like. Oh, this is a cool idea. Vanya. Oh, Vanya again. Vanya. Yes, go do it, man. Vanya's got some, I can tell Vanya's an adventurer. Vanya says, can I practice my English by doing volunteer work and traveling? Yes! Because I'm going to take a gap year. You're decided to do it. Good for you. And spend this year taking actions. I think connection with other people using English will be a great challenge. And you will do it. I think that is a super good idea. And I look forward to hearing from you. When you're on the road traveling around, please continue to you know, drop in and leave comments and tell us how you're doing. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I don't think you've ever, I always see you always communicate and ask good questions here on Facebook. Not sure if, I don't think you have on a Twitter, but if you get a Twitter account, please uh, 
connect with me on Twitter because I'm just, I'm excited for you. You're about to charge out and explore the world. So good for you. Please let us know how you're doing. Okay. Yeah, Mustafa has another good point, and he's right about this, and this is why I have courses. <laughs> it can be very challenging to listen to advanced materials first. Start with English courses that are designed for this purpose, where the teacher can come through with a story, for example, and explain everything. Then you start with things that are a little more difficult, starting yourself with fluent and become more advanced. I hope that helps. Yes, exactly, and that's why I have courses. That's why I have my Power English course, which is usually the first one I recommend. That's why I have my VIP program. That's why I have my pronunciation course, because uh, Mustafa's exactly right. It can be difficult to just start reading books and listening to TV shows. All that can feel quite difficult sometimes. And so the courses are kind of a bridge to get you to where you're able to do that more and to get your fluency up fast, faster. Because sometimes using the books and using the TV shows can be slower because it's difficult, because nobody's explaining anything to you. You have to do everything yourself 100%. So sometimes it's, it, it takes longer. It's more difficult. It can be a little more frustrating. So that's the purpose of the courses. You're exactly right about that. Vladislav, what do you think about making some effortless Japanese? Hey. We have it. My wife has that. Effortless. Well, she has Learn Real Japanese, which is a very basic course that's for someone starting out with zero Japanese, nothing at all. And it will get you used to the kind of the basic structure of Japanese and some of the core beginner vocabulary. And then from there, she has a podcast for Effortless Japanese, and I think eventually we'll develop uh, more higher level stuff too. So, yes, indeed. Good idea. Hmm? <laughs> Un says, I learn and practice a lot. AJ, I'm a big, big one of your fans. I learn and practice a lot from your YouTube channel. Thanks so much. Yes, indeed. That's something else you can do. That's why I do this. You can use this. You can get lots and lots and lots of listening practice just listening to my show and podcast. You can pause and imitate my speaking from the show and podcast. So there's a lot of things you can do on your own too if you're if you're motivated. All right, I'm gonna do one more, and then time to go. Hello from Italy, Giovanni. Hello. Okay. Asking about my book. Okay. Hi, Jay. I'm interested in getting your book with video. I don't have a video for my book, but I have an audio for my book. So my book website is effortlessenglish.com without the club, just effortlessenglish.com. Get information about my book. The audio book is free. You can s actually, you can sign up there. You can enter your email there on effortlessenglish.com and you'll get my audio book for free. We're making a new page on my main website, effortlessenglishclub.com, where you can also sign up to get the audio book for free. So I'll announce that probably just in a few days. That'll be ready. So the audio book's free. The book is $7.99, I think, $7.99. All right, that is all for today. So again, lots of ways. We've heard lots of great suggestions in our comments and questions. And I gave you a whole long list at the beginning of the show of ways to practice your speaking when you're all alone, at home, in your country, with no one to talk to. You can still improve your speaking. Okay, join my VIP program. As always, go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. See you next time.